so let's continue with the rest of this topic. We're going to look at the surface markings of the pleura, so we're just going to go through the anatomy of the pleura real quick. Um, if you guys remember when we took the pericardium, I told you guys if you understood the, the concepts that apply to that um, part of the human body, then the same thing is going to apply here. So, the pleura are basically a set of thin membranes that cover the surface of the lungs and also line the internal aspect of the thoracic cavity, or the internal aspect of the thoracic wall. And they serve to, let's just say, protect the lungs, but they're mainly important for reducing friction and making sure that the movement of the lungs during breathing is smooth and, um, you know, just uh, efficient and easy. Um, so if you guys remember with the pericardium, we had the fibrous pericardium on the outside, and then we had the parietal um, pericardium and the visceral pericardium. So with the lungs, because we have the, the thoracic cage, that substitutes the fibrous pericardium. So we don't need a third layer uh, surrounding the lungs. So the fibrous pericardium, and, sorry, the, the thoracic cage is the equivalent of the fibrous pericardium, okay? So that means that the parietal pleura is the layer that lines the thoracic um, wall on the inside, and then it will reflect and then when it covers the surface of the lungs, it will be referred to as the visceral pleura. So you can see here, this is a segment that's been taken off the pleura that lines the lungs, and that's called the visceral pleura. And the layer that lines the thoracic wall on the inside, that is the parietal pleura. And similarly, there's a space between the two layers that's going to be called the pleural cavity. And it's also going to be filled with a small amount of fluid. Okay. I explained this part of the lecture using a blackboard or a whiteboard or whatever, but you know, COVID. So um, hopefully this is gonna work out. Okay, so what I'm just going to do right now, and hopefully talk you guys through this point, is I'm going to draw a little sketch of the chest or the thoracic wall, okay? And only part of it, not the whole thing. Wow, that looks terrible. Hold on a second, let me fix this. Okay, let's try this again. much better okay so you guys should guess by now this is the manubrium okay and then down here we've got the body of the sternum okay and then down here this is the zeophloid process okay now just so that we're clear this is not going to be a very artistic representation but it's the best that I can do okay so this is the sternal notch obviously Okay, so what I'm going to draw here is the bone that articulates with the upper part of the sternum, and this bone is called the clavicle. That's actually the bone that's part of your upper limb, and what it does is it suspends the, um, the upper limb to the trunk, okay? Uh, you guys will get that later, so don't worry about it for now, okay? And then here, this is going to be, again, this is just a representation. This is going to be the coastal cartilage of the first rib. Okay, I'm mostly going to draw these just passing out across, and they might not be exactly balanced out. And then you've got the second coastal cartilage. Again. And then we're going to go up to three. Four, five, 
six, and then we're going to keep seven down here a little bit. Okay, and this is where it gets ugly. Okay, so eight is going to be attached here. Okay, and then nine there, and ten over here. Okay, like I said, this is not very artistic, but it's the best I can do. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then again, you're going to have eight, nine, and ten. Okay, now, like I said, I just want you guys to kind of get a feel of the, um, the structures, but obviously if you guys look for this in the textbook, it's going to be a lot more um, artistic, or if you maybe look for a picture on the internet. For now, I'm just going to let you guys uh, follow along with the numbers. That's the most important thing I want you guys to know. Okay, now I'm just going to shade these in so that you guys can differentiate ribs and coastal cartilages from the rest of the drawing. Yes, I realized I could have waited and just started filming from the point where um, this was already drawn. But, I have to keep you guys entertained a little. Okay, here we go. So, so this is what we've got so far. And first of all, we're going to work with the uh, lines that mark out where the pleura should be. Okay, now, if you guys remember, the pleura is divided into uh, certain parts, uh, depending on where it is in the body. And we have a segment of the pleura that goes upwards into the neck, and that was called the cervical pleura. Okay, now the surface marking, or the line that marks the, um, the cervical pleura, goes like this. Okay, you're going to take a point... Your starting point is going to be this joint here, which is called the sternoclavicular joint, okay? You're going to take a line from the sternoclavicular joint, and you're going to pass up roughly like this, okay? And then you're going to end your line at the junction between the medial two-thirds and the middle part of the clavicle, okay? This distance from here to here should be roughly 1 inch or 2.5 centimeters, okay? We're going to do the same thing over on this side, and we're going to just go all the way there, and like I said, 2.5 centimeters, okay? Again, not artistic, okay? And just for argument's sake, this is going to be the right side. And this is going to be the left side. Okay? Um, right, we're going to continue with the right side just to make it easier. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to continue this medial line all the way down behind the sternum until you reach the level of the second coastal cartilage. Okay? Now, this should be in the midline. Okay? I know I haven't drawn them very close together. But this should generally be in the midline. Now notice up until this point, the surface markings are the same on both sides. Okay? Now what you're going to do with the line on the right is you're going to continue it straight down behind the sternum until you reach the sixth coastal cartilage. So two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So I'm just going to continue it all the way down here. It's completely straight. Notice I haven't deviated at any point, so just go straight down. Then, what you're going to do is once you reach number six, sick coastal cartilage, you're going to turn your line and start moving to the side until you reach the eighth coastal cartilage. Okay? Now, at this point, okay, I'm just going to draw a little star here. Okay? This is a point called the mid clavicular line, okay? So it's basically the middle of the clavicle 
and the clavicle is one of the bones that you can actually feel on the surface of the body. So if you follow the midclavicular line down to the level of roughly the eighth coastal cartilage, then you know you're at this point of the pleura. Okay? With that line, you're going to keep continuing back, right, until you reach the tenth coastal cartilage. So this was eight. This is the tenth. Here, you're at a point called the mid-axillary line. Okay? So, if I can feel where my tenth coastal cartilage is, and I'm in the mid-axillary line, which is basically down the side of the body, I know that I've reached roughly the lowest part of the, um, the pleura. Okay? And then you're going to take that same line and curve it back. Now this is me curving it backwards. Okay? And then when you reach the very back of the body, which is the paravertebral line, okay, this is going to be at the level of the 12th rib. Okay? And then you just keep going back, and I'm just going to close this off right here. Okay? And there you have it. I closed off my pleura. Okay? So I went up the clavicle 2.5 centimeters. That was my cervical pleura. I continued straight behind the side of the sternum. Okay? And this is the mediastinal pleura. I curved it back or curved it down at the level of the sixth coastal cartilage until I reached my eighth and tenth to give me the diaphragmatic pleura. And then I curved it back, okay, and then just closed it off here to complete the line. When you curve it back and you reach the uh, paravertebral line, you're at the level of the twelfth rib. Okay? Now the same line or the same idea applies to the left uh, pleura and lung. The only difference is that with the left lung or the left pleura, you have to remember that the heart is sitting in the middle here, so there's going to be a little bit of a curve happening. Now, with this one, what you do is you go down to roughly the fourth coastal cartilage. Okay? Once you reach the fourth, then you start curving it to the back until you reach the sixth, okay? So you do eventually reach the sixth. The only difference is that you don't go straight down. You just curve it back. And then you do the same thing where you continue down to the eighth and the tenth, and then you close it off at the twelfth here. Okay? And there you have it. That is your plural. Okay, so hopefully that video made the surface markings of the plural clear for you. And that concludes the second part of this lecture. We'll continue with the next one, um, or the next part of the lecture in the uh, upcoming video.